to um, Love Poems to God. Today I'm going to be talking about St. Francis of Assisi. What's interesting about him is that um, I am also doing a book study um, about his um, order. So he has a, um, an order of monks called the Franciscan um, Movement and um, it talks really more in depth about the idea of grace and um, so that will be in the links below if you are interested in learning more uh, about understanding the what's called the Franciscan way. I have always had um, a love for St. Francis um, and so it's just really um, a joy to share some of his work with you and you might feel the same. All right, so we're going to talk today about his um, his poems, but again, uh, the book study that I'm doing that is also on this channel is called Eager to Love, so that might be something for you to take a look at if you're interested in the work that he has done in the world that's really impacted many people. So I wanted to share a little bit about him before I begin. Francis Bernadone is the most beloved saint of the Western world. His love for nature and his hymns to the sun, moon, earth, and birds have captured the hearts of millions of Catholics and the respect of millions of people of all faiths. This saint achieved the highest state of consciousness possible to man, a divine union with God. Francis was born in 18, uh, excuse me, 1182 in Assisi of central Italy into a family of a wealthy linen merchant. In his youth, he enjoyed all the privileges of such a station in life and was said to have especially loved parties. The end of the 12th century was a time of political turmoil, and as Francis grew to manhood, he began to embrace the ideals of medieval chivalry as depicted in the Troubadour songs, influencing him to seek a military career as a knight. He was captured and imprisoned after his first battle and returned home a year later very ill. Recovered, he determined to enlist again, this time fighting for the Pope in the Crusades. The Crusades brought Francis to the Middle East and there are accounts that St. Francis was in contact with Rumi's master, Shams, while Francis was in Damascus. Francis had many visions in his life and it was around this time that one of these visions made him realize a military career was not for him. He returned home and began a new life on fire with love for God. He began to devote himself to helping the impoverished and the, the afflicted. It is said that he embraced and kissed a leper and experienced a baptism of joy and triumph over fear. There are many wonderful accounts of St. Francis. When he was about 25, he would often pray in secluded spots. Once, while in an old country chapel, the painted figure of Christ on the crucifix spoke to him and saying, Francis, go and repair my house, which as you see is falling completely to ruin. Thus, his destiny began to unfold. Another story that may be unfamiliar to some readers is that sometimes when Francis was traveling with his brother monks, he would pick up a stick and pretend it was a violin bow in his arm a violin, and he would start playing the violin and singing French songs that his mother had taught him as a child. Francis would leap about and dance and become ecstatic, and it is said of Francis that his love for God at times made him so wild that few understood him. In many churches around the world, one of the happiest Sundays is St. Francis Day, when people bring their animals to the church to be blessed. St. Francis' life was a great blessing to all, and his spiritual beauty, power, and compassion will always offer us guidance. So on that note, let me give you a couple of his poems. The first one is called, Because He Gave Birth. So precious is a man's faith in God. So precious. Never should we harm that. Because he gave birth to all religions. The next one is called, When I Return from Rome. A bird took flight, and a flower in a field whistled at me as I passed. I drank from a stream of clear water, 
and at night the sky untied her hair and I fell asleep, clutching a tress, a tress of gods. When I returned from Rome, all said, tell us the great news. And with great excitement I did. A flower in a field whistled, and at night the sky untied her hair, and I fell asleep, clutching a sacred tress. The last poem, he asked for charity. He came to my house and asked for charity. And I fell on my knees and cried, beloved, what may I give? Just love, he said, just love. As I was sitting here, down fell a feather. Thanks so much for stopping by. Please like, subscribe, and share, and of course look for that series on um, the uh, movement of grace through St. Francis Assisi.